We've heard great testimonies. We've ha had great fashion shows, but this is the meat of the program, God's word. So uh, I pray that um, as you listen to her, that you will give her her heart. Now, a little bit about Burgundy. She's such an incredible woman. Um, when I think about her, she's one of my friends, a uh, best friend in the church again. We got a chance to know one another a little bit in LA. But what I appreciate about Burgundy is she's very easy to talk to. And she really loves God and gives you her heart when you talk to her. You know, she's vice president of the uh, National MS Society, where she's not just a working woman, but she works in the kingdom of God as well. Her and her husband lead the uh, singles ministry of the church and doing an awesome job. You know, but so as you listen to her, make sure you listen with all your heart and give her your heart because she's definitely going to come with the word of God. Yeah, Thank you awesome. so much. Thank you. Amen. Love Thank you. you. Well, good morning. Well, now it's afternoon, ladies. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, it's such a privilege to be able to uh, share God's word with you, share my life with you, um, and just really look at what, why is our theme Extreme Makeover? And uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm originally from Honolulu, Hawaii. I was born and raised there. So I'm typical island girl. You couldn't tell by the way I'm dressed now because I'm not, I am now a DC girl. So, <laughs> and, and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Uh, but you know, I was born and raised there. I've been married for 22 years uh, to my husband, Rob. Um, I know I, I got married when I was two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, I have, I actually have three kids, two sons and a daughter-in-law. It's Darian, Brandon, and uh, my daughter-in-law, Dina. Um, Darian and Dina are in L.A. right now. So my husband and I have served in the church in, in Los Angeles uh, for about seven years. And uh, we recently moved over to be with Ron and Tracy and the church here. Um, real, actually, it was just September, so about five months ago. So we haven't been here that long. But what a fun and inspiring time we've had so far uh, today. It's just been amazing, hasn't it? And I just really wanted to talk about what it means to let it all go. What is an extreme makeover? And you guys probably saw the movie or the show, Extreme Makeover, the house edition. Well, we're going to talk about mind, body, and soul edition today. And, you know, I really want to, I want to give it up again for Jasmine. You did such a great job uh, singing that song. Um, let it go. It really helped to prepare our hearts for what we're about to hear today. And the testimonies were absolutely incredible. But what I want you to think about is who did you relate to in that fashion show? That was so fun. I've never really experienced anything like that, really seeing the fashion show um, in light of character. Uh, for me, I could relate to almost every single one of them. Uh, <laughs> Just throughout my life, at different points in my life, I, I looked at these women, I was like, wow, that was something that I needed to change in my life personally. And it was so impacting to see that, you know what, God can change anybody. You know, sometimes we forget, like, you, maybe you've gone to church your whole life, but you know what, we all still need, we all still need a makeover. I don't know how you guys came in this morning, you know, some, some people may have come in happy, uh, excited, tired, worn down, you know, the weeks kind of gets away with us sometimes, discouraged. But however you came in this morning, I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement. You know, no matter who invited you, God brought you here today. Uh, and, you know, whether you got something out of the testimonies, somebody you could relate to, I just appreciate your guys' vulnerability so much. It just touched my heart. Um, but just ask yourself this question before you leave here today is what is God speaking to you about this morning? What does he want you to hear? Uh, it, it could be one thing, it could be five things, but anything that you are going through, like Lisa said, if you gotta walk out, come back in to let it go, do whatever it takes in your heart to let the things go um, that has affected you throughout your life, um, throughout your time in getting here, and even right now, so we can really focus on God's word today. So mind, body, and soul, what are we going to talk about? There's going to be three points, and I'm going to hit one of them pretty quickly. But the first point is your mind does matter. The second point is beauty treatments for your soul. 
And the third point is your spiritual mirror. So if you don't mind turning with me to Romans 12, we're going to start there. Romans 12, verse 2. This is one of my favorite scriptures, but as you turn, th- as you turn there, I want, to ex- I want to define for you and me what an extreme makeover is. What does it mean? How do we apply it to our mind, body, and soul? So the word extreme means it's not ordinary or average. It's very far in one direction. So it's far in one direction. That's what extreme means, right? Um, it's actually two things that are as opposite as possible. The example that we can use here is joy and grief. Joy and grief are opposite of each other. Makeover. Makeover is a complete transformation, a remodeling of something. So you can make over a house, but we can also make over our mind, our body, our soul by letting things go. And as you can see, a makeover is normally described in something more physical, you know, makeup. We're all doing our model over here, which got made over today. Makeup, hair, etc. So an extreme makeover, when you put it together, is a complete transformation in a very far direction. I want to encourage you today to see, is that, did that happen in your life? Or maybe it needs to happen again in your life. You know, we all need transformation because our mind does matter. And... In Romans 12, 2, it reads, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So our mind matters to God. It does. The wrong patterns that we take in our life and that we create by some of the choices that we make um, throughout our life, it will lead us in the wrong direction, and we have to change directions in order to do that. We have to think about the patterns that we have created throughout our life, and what does that pattern look like for you? You know, um, I, I thought about patterns. You know, you have those sewing patterns. Anybody took sewing lessons? I don't know if you did, but, uh, oh, a lot of people. See, I didn't know sewing was still in, but you, if you take a pattern, I don't, you know, we took it in, I took it in high school. I'm 41 years old, so you can imagine it was, it was a while ago. But in high school, I took sewing lessons, and I wanted to make a shirt. And so you get the pattern of the shirt, and you follow the pattern, you cut it, and you follow the direction. But if you pattern yourself after the world, that's what you're going to look like. But God says he wants us to not conform to the pattern of the world. If we're going to have a pattern of a shirt, we're not going to have a gorgeous dress. You know, In the same way in our life, we really need to look, are we patterning our life? After God's word, do we know what that looks like? And I needed help in sewing class. I needed to be taught how to sew. I'm not good at it, by the way. Um, Some people may be really good at sewing. But you know what? We need to learn to be good at sewing God's word and making sure we have the right pattern in our life. And we don't want to fit into the world. We must transform and change like the scripture says. And you know, I don't know if you notice in the scripture something, I'm a heartsy gal. I'm from Hawaii, so um, I can be a little bit more on the Aloha spirit side. I like to look at the heart. I get very moved quickly um, in some ways when it comes to emotions. Um, But it doesn't say to transform your heart. It says transform your mind. Then your heart will follow it does say transform your mind, uh, and the mind is so important in us to be able to accept God's word for what it is. It leads us to God's perfection, as the scripture shares with us today. You know, this pattern that God has for our life is perfect. It's flawless. It has no mistakes. And as I looked into the characters of the women that uh, was in the fashion show today, I had to think about it. And I was like, wow, I can relate to every one of them. But a few of them that stood out to me was the nightclub girl, Patty. Um, she, she was uh, the girl that partied and uh, shook those things and it all flew all over the place. Well, I was kind of that party girl. I was in, in the scene of the nightclub. Uh, I didn't start off that way, but I was searching for something, you know, and, but what was my outcome when I patterned my life that way? My out- outcome was I was pregnant. I was unmarried. I love my son, but I was unmarried for, um, and pregnant. Um, I was afraid. I was 18 years old. I just turned 18 the first day I went to a club. I went on my birthday. 
I stopped going to church that day. I made a conscious decision that I was going to go experience the nightlife. I could, I could really relate to the first sister that shared about her life, you know, in, in college. I was just starting my life, but the difference was my outcome was painful. It was very painful, and I needed to look at how was I going to transform that. Another girl I related to, I love the religious woman, the religious woman that was coming down the aisle. I went to church my whole life, grew up in a, in a home where my grandfather was a minister, so I really did have a lot of good upbringing, but it, it made me religious. I did and said the right things um, in front of my family, but I lived a double life. And what was my outcome then for that pattern in my life? I was confused. I didn't know what was the truth, what was not. I didn't really know where I needed to go to church, how I needed to live. I was empty. There was no power in my life for me to change. I was trying to change every Sunday, and then I would go back to school and go to work and do all the things that I knew how to do because I was still patterning my life against the, wor the world and not God's word. And the very things I wanted to change, I couldn't change. And the last one that I'll share, and like I said, all of the women kind of stood out to me, but these are the top three, was a professional woman. Uh, that's my life. It can look like my life now, but I try really hard for that not to be my life because I want God to change my life. I don't want it to take over. But when it did take over my life, and that was me, and God wasn't the center of my life, I was climbing up the corporate ladder. I started off in the nonprofit industry and, you know, had a lot of opportunities that God put in front of me. And, you know, it, I was successful. I looked pretty successful on the outside. I was pretty young uh, as a director in Hawaii. And what was my outcome then? I had false security. I had momentary happiness. I became too busy um, to really go to church to put God first in my life. I was too busy in my own mind. Uh, I, I didn't know what my priorities were. I was too tired to pray, too exhausted, too religious to see I even was far gone at this point spiritually. I never had a true daily relationship with God. I had no one in my life to be vulnerable with. I really did live a double life at this time. And, you know, my list does go on. You know, the, so, you know, I once had the pattern of the woman with the attitude as well. And my outcome was devastating. I, this was probably the worst because I became numb. I was, as Tracy mentioned it earlier, I became numb to what it is that I was feeling. I, I really didn't know what I felt. I didn't know what was right and what was wrong. I had an idea of what it was, but I didn't know how to transform my heart. It was because I didn't yet transform my mind, and I did not let anyone in to my life. So if you would turn with me to Matthew, we'll dig in God's word a little bit more. Matthew 22, such a great scripture. So Matthew 22, verse 37, it just says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know, to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, made a lot of sense. I, I can feel a lot. I, can, I know what it feels like to pray and get an answered prayer. I knew what it felt like to be very anxious and to get some comfort uh, at a heart level. But, you know, my mind was something that was going to take work. Um, left to myself, my mind went all over the place. I realized that at this point that my mind did matter to God. Then I was led to a church, just like this one um, in Hawaii, and these women studied the Bible with me. And, I, and then my, my extreme makeover actually started at this time. My mind started to transform because I was in God's word. And I had to let go of a lot of things and not get stuck in the things that was making me stuck. And so it sounded like an extreme makeover to me. I was like, okay, I guess I really needed to be made over. And I finally learned the new pattern that, that God had for my life. It was a perfect pattern. This pattern that I could let go of all the many challenges, 
all the shame, the shame of being pregnant before I was married, the shame of running away from home as a child, the shame of the abuse that I got, um, you know, from within my own family, as well as, you know, I, I had gotten raped as well during uh, high school. And it was by somebody I knew very well. And I did not know how to let it go. I was stuck. I was paralyzed. I couldn't change until God's word changed me. But it had to change in my mind. And that is something I want to encourage you. I don't know what your pains are today, women. But whatever it is, God can change you. It's such a miracle. But it takes God's word. And I hope you will allow the people that have brought you in, whether you have gone to church your whole life and you know your Bible, or maybe you don't really know. It's okay. No matter where you're at, this is the only thing that can change you. So I want to encourage you with that today. And just ask yourself, what are the patterns that keep you from giving God your whole mind, your whole heart, your whole soul? And how do you seek God with your whole heart? You can write this scripture down. It's Jeremiah 29, 11, and it reads this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in a future then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart and until I gave my whole heart I could not find God because it took some extra work on my part because I had to get open I needed to learn how to overcome so what is it going to take for you today uh, think about that and start to make some decisions in your life for those of you who maybe have made that decision, what is it going to take for you to recommit yourself to seeking God with your whole heart? Do you seek God with all your heart? Do you come equipped before the Lord when you start your day? Do you come equipped before the Lord when you come to a women's day like today? And it has been an amazing day so far. So I hope that really helps you in your mind. And I want to lead us to our second point, which is the beauty treatments for the soul. This is actually my favorite point out of all three. Um, every woman loves beauty, don't they? Do you love beauty? The, you know who I think of? I actually think of Lisa. I was like, you got to teach me to accessorize. Lisa was the one who introduced me. She is like accessory queen. She knows how to make her outfits look great. But you know what? God actually gave women an innate ability to want beautiful things, to like beautiful things, to want to actually not come out scruffy, you know, like guys will like go in their shorts and, you know, their pants and they'll go and play basketball or something. They don't always care about putting on jewelry or maybe even their wedding ring. That might be the only thing they wear. But, you know, God gave us that. And it's so funny because we go to great lengths for beauty. We have a lot, of, a lot of beauty treatments, right? I know I love, I love the spa, guys. So if you ever want to go to the spa, um, call me. You know? <laughs> I do love the spa. It's a relaxing. They have all kinds of treatments. makes your skin soft. And um, you, you make over your face. And it's, it's really neat. And uh, we get excited about manicures. I don't know if you do, but I did. Uh, pedicures. What else do you get excited about? Extensions, for those of you who do extensions. I love extensions. I, I know, I know. I, I like extensions too, guys. So, uh, but you know, we even love rocks. You know, do you know the rocks? Some some married women have them, right? You know, we get excited about rocks that are on our hand. That's the first thing people do when they get engaged. They're like, oh my God, let me see the ring. You know, they want to see the rock because it's, it's beautiful. God created that in us to appreciate these beautiful things. Um, and how many of us like those things? We, we all do. So if you would turn to me, with, um, turn with me to First Peter. Uh, we're going to go First Peter chapter three. And this is the theme scripture actually of today uh, and this particular point. And although it's about a wife, it's talking about a wife here. This applies to every woman that wants to have a relationship with God. This is how you should approach your Lord. Even for us married women, like I want you to take yourself out of, your, um, out of the wife category with your husband for a minute and think about your relationship with God. So let's read this together in 1 Peter 3, 3 and 4. 
It just says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. This is the only place that I have seen, and there might be some other things that are really worth it to God, but this is of great worth in God's sight for you as a wife with your spouse, but also your relationship with God, a gentle and quiet spirit. I don't know what you guys think of when a gentle and quiet spirit, because you know what I thought? I thought it's, it's that meek um, woman, that shy woman. Um, it doesn't seem very strong. I think I'm a strong woman, you know. Um, I, I don't know if I like these characteristics, but it's of great worth in God's sight. So it made me really think, I need to study this out. What does this mean to God? What does this mean? It's a quality every Christian woman should have. And it's something that I needed to gain perspective on and change in my life. So if you think about beauty treatments for your soul, do you know what that is? Are you devoted to them? As we devote ourselves to our nails, as we devote ourselves to wearing nice clothes, do you devote yourself to the soul? Do you devote yourself to finding out what a gentle and quiet spirit is? And I want to share those two things with you today because it's something that I think will help to change your mind and your perspective about God. So inward beauty, think about that, verse 4, is unfading. It doesn't fade imperishable. So I had to reapply my lipstick today about four times. I don't know about you guys. We had to powder our face, you know, to, after we cried, after the testimonies. I had to powder myself up, make sure I don't look a wreck. But you know what? A gentle and quiet spirit is unfading. You don't need to reapply anything. You just keep building on it and growing with it. It's so, and it's so precious to God. It's valuable. It's forever and ever. And there's not a whole lot of things that are forever, but this is forever, you know. And I thought about the external beauty. You know, we age. I'm, I'm about 41 now. I forgot my age, but I did the calculation before today. So I am 41 today. I am, this April, I'll be 42. But I am aging. My skin's a little drier. I look a little older. I got a little bit more on my hips, you know. I'm not as fit as I used to be. I want to look like Tracy, actually. <laughs> She's fit. And she's got amazing, amazing outward beauty. And, but you know, our hair, our hair thins out. I used to have thick, long hair. It used to be past my, my waist here, because I used to dance hula, but it was thick and long. And um, okay. now it's thin, <laughs> so I have to do the layer cut so it, it kind of falls right. You know, we wrinkle our hair changes color. I'm starting to get some white hair. But you know what? Your inward beauty will not grow white. It will not grow old. It will not get wrinkled if you take care of it. You got to take care of it. So it just gets more and more beautiful the more you take care of it. It never, ever fades. And it's eternal. This is what God is looking for for our life. And um, so I want to help us today. As we, we think about these things, I want you to think about this because we want to look at the Greek translation because that's the real, that's where the original gospel came from. And it's very fascinating as I was studying this out. As we take time and we take the energy and the dedication to apply and develop our inward beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, we must understand what that is. And these two qualities are that is of great worth in God's sight, you're going to be amazed today, because I was amazed as I was doing this study. So the Greek translation of gentle, listen to this, comes from the root word prius, P-R-I-U-S, prius. It is the exercise of what you're doing first towards God. So let me repeat that. It's the exercise of what you do first towards God. It is the spirit in which we accept God's dealings with us as good. No matter what bad thing. When I got pregnant before I was married, I had to accept the dealings with God as a good thing. That's a gentle spirit. If you have a challenge going on in your life, whatever that may be. I, you know, we heard from Judy. She had a lot of challenges that she went through that she overcame because she became gentle. She accepted that 
All the things that was handed over to her was good and of God, and she accepted that. It's not resisting or disputing God's word in your life. It's not, it is not resisting or disputing. Oh, my gosh. I am such a disputer. Like I wanted to be a lawyer. We have Lindsay, who's a lawyer. That was my, my first, like, career dream um, because I love disputing. You know, I, I love to, like, make it all better. But you know what? It's not disputing God. Like, that is, the, that is what it means to be gentle. I'm just like, wow, I was so convicted. And so the word prius, gentle, is first about your relationship with God. Do you trust him? Do you trust that his way is the best way? Everything happening in your life, are you allowing that to lead you to him or lead you back to him if you've gone away? Or maybe you've just stopped having faith. You know, are you trusting the Lord? Are you gentle towards God? The opposite of Prius, I don't know if you thought about this. I thought about this as I was writing this. I was like, what is it? Oh, boy, because this describes me sometimes. It's self-assertiveness and self-interest is the opposite of Prius. And I can be pretty assertive at work. I can be pretty assertive with my husband, but that's not gentle. That's not the spirit that God wants me to have. He wants me to have a gentle spirit. A spirit that's not disputing God. That means I need to not dispute my husband. And I I don't need to dispute the people in my workplace because, why? I need to be gentle. I need to win people to Christ. And so is your, gen- is your gentleness shown in your life today? Are you humble? It's, it's closely related to the word humble. Are you fighting God in anything in your life today? Or are you prius? Are you gentle with God? And is it something that you desire to take the time to pay attention to? I know that this has been something that I desire, and I need to work on it in my life. I need to work on not fighting God when the things or the answers are maybe not yet or no. (laughs) You know, I like to hear the answers yes, um, but we don't always get that answer. And that's okay, because God is always working for our good. Second is quiet. So quiet is, in the Greek translation, heisukios. These words are very hard, but I learned how to pronounce them just for today. Heisukios. And heisukios means tranquility arising from within. So that's why I like the spa, right? Because it makes me tranquil. Uh, It also means undisturbed, peaceable, and quiet, at peace. So many women today... I don't know about you, but coming to D.C., I'm living a faster-paced life than I ever did. Hawaii, I'm on the beach. My work, I'm like, I'll get to it when I get to it. I'll I'll be right back. I'm going to go for a three-hour lunch break. (laughs) Ask me if I can do that now. Sometimes I don't even eat lunch. I'm like, whoa, I'm working really hard. But, you know, we all have... We all have a lot of stress, you know. We all have a lot of things that we're trying to accomplish. We have single moms. We have married women who who have to give attention to their husbands, to their kids. We're stretched in every direction. We are anxious about many things. You know, we're all trying to do so much. And we need to take the time to build these qualities that God designed for us, which is to be at peace. And... Peace comes from many different forms, but the peace God's talking about is a peace that comes from not disputing him. That's why he has it together. And it is something that when you put them both together, it is, this is an amazing, strong woman. This isn't the woman I thought of that meek, not strong. Actually, it takes a lot of hard muscle in the heart to work on this. I was like, oh my gosh, I have my work cut out for me. But it's, is it, it's not something you're born with either. You know, on the outward, be- Tracy was born beautiful. Did you guys know that? You know, Lisa was born beautiful. There's so many beautiful women in the crowd. Like, you guys are born beautiful on the outside. But on the inside, you're not born with it. Um, that's what's so hard about this scripture because it's so challenging that we need to pay attention. We have to develop these two qualities in our life. You, you can't get it surgically implanted. You know, you can have the surgical eyebrows put on. I've seen somebody with that. I was like, it looks kind of strange because it's flat. Um, but people do that in, in L.A. They, like, put tattoos as eyeliner, and, and nothing's wrong with it. But it's, you know, you can't get this surgically implanted in you. Just, God, you know what, just 
put it in me. I want to be gentle and quiet. You got to work at it. Uh, you, you really need to take the time to develop it. And so both words together, to, when I looked at it, it just means surrender. I was like, why couldn't he just use surrender? Because it means more this way. It's going to take a lot of work to get to a surrendered heart. And, and it's precious. I want to remind you, it's precious to God. It's highly valued by God. And I wanted to talk about this because it's not the outward demeanor as we all look at that gentle and quiet spirit. We think it's an outward demeanor. It's an inward. It's about your inward character and your heart, your response to God's word. You can actually be a strong charactered woman and be surrendered to God, be gentle and quiet and not dispute the things that he has for your life. And I hope that we can be a part of your life because it takes people to help develop. We got to sharpen each other. I couldn't have done any of the things that I've had to change in my life. I could not have done it alone. I couldn't even have done it just with my husband. I needed women just like you in my life that can be a reflection, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And so I want to encourage you again to transform your mind and spend some time in these two qualities. As we go through our ups and downs in life, these actually lead us to God. They actually help us to become this gentle and quiet woman that God is talking about. So before we go to our third point, which is your spiritual mirror, and this is our last point for today, imagine a mirror. All you can see, you can't see the uh, model, in, like Melanie, you can't see the outward appearance. All you can see looking back at you, just is your heart. What is looking back at you? Is it gentle? Is it quiet? Like, what does God see in there? Uh, what does your spirit look like? It, for me, I was really challenged when I was asking myself this question this week. I was like, wow, I've really got to change. I have to not be so entitled to different things. I've been working with different sisters on this part of my heart because I want to be a gentle and quiet woman that pleases God. So you can make your way to James because we're going to read James 1. First thing we do when we want to be beautiful is we stand in front of a mirror. You know, I don't know how many times I walked back to the mirror, but that whole bathroom was full of women that was looking at themselves in the mirror. And it was so neat because I was like, wow, they all look really good. But we evaluate. We're like, oh, does this look good? Uloma was like, wow, this is the prettiest. Patty made me look really pretty. Uloma shared her testimony today because and she had her makeup done. But we evaluate. We evaluate what is off so we can fix it. It's the same for us spiritually. We need to evaluate where we're at. We need to stand before our spiritual mirror. And what is that spiritual mirror? And we're going to learn that in James 1. James 1, 23. It reads here, Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself or herself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently, let me repeat that, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. This is such a a powerful scripture about your spiritual mirror. Our spiritual mirror, we all have it, and if you don't, we want to get you one. It's, it's the Bible. This is a spiritual mirror. Uh, we can look into it and we can change anything. And again, it never fades. This is the only perfect thing on this earth. And it's so amazing to see that if we look intently, I read that twice because God didn't say just look in the mirror. He said look intently in it. Why? We can be wrong. I was a religious woman I I grew up going to church my whole life, and as I looked in the Bible and I saw my reflection, I was like, something is wrong. There is something off about my life. It doesn't look like this, and it's hard. I don't know how to change. I was overwhelmed, but God gave me peace as I started to change my life. I started to work out that spiritual muscle, and we need to stand before our spiritual mirror today, this week, tomorrow, next month. We actually have to go in our Bible every day so we can evaluate what we look like before we walk out that door. 
I do this every day before I go to work because I have a stressful job. It's a, I am a vice president of development over at um, the National MS Society. Actually, we have two of our co-workers here, and I'm so excited, Katie and Uloma. Uh, Uloma works with me, and Katie's our director of development. And you know what? Before I go to work, they could probably tell you it's a stressful place sometimes. It's not the work, it's all the things we need to do to achieve what we need to achieve. And I need to evaluate where I'm at before God every day before I go to work. Is that what you're doing in your life? Or if you don't know how to do it, it's okay. I didn't know how to do it either. I needed somebody to teach me, to walk with me, to pray with me, to show me, to show that I had a blemish here. You know, I I appreciate when someone tells me, you have something in your nose or in your teeth or in your eye. You know, we don't want to walk out that way. It gives us a glimpse of our soul, our very soul. And this is the only place you'll find that glimpse. So do you have someone in your life that's going to help you? We want to be that person for you today. And there's two things that, as I wrap up, there's two things that keep us away. There's fear that keeps us away, and there's two kinds of fear that keeps us away from that spiritual mirror. Sometimes I don't like to see my blemishes, to be honest, but we need to. And, you know, it always feels good afterwards. The fear that paralyzes us, it's that emotional girl. That you look at that fashion show. It showed everything the scripture is talking about. You know, that person um, on drugs, you know, the, the drug addict, the alcoholic, when they were fearful, when they were in pain, it paralyzed them that they went to something else other than God. But God has a perfect plan for you and for me, that a fear that will change you. You can write this down. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It's Exodus 20:20, 20, 20. And it says, these things have come to test you so that the fear of God will keep you from sinning. You know, we have a life that God is trying to draw us close to him. And we need the fear that motivates us, that I got to get this done because I know what will happen if I don't. Or maybe I don't know what will happen if I don't. We need to find out. It's a healthy fear that draws us to God. It's this gentle and quiet woman that is precious to God. That's why God is asking us to, do, to really focus our attention and devote our hearts. I believe God gave us a heart of loving beauty so we could relate to the scripture. So we could, as women, he, you notice he didn't talk to the men here. He's talking to the women. We need to have that gentle. It doesn't say men have a gentle and quiet spirit. They have other things they have to be. But as women, that's a quality that is not appreciated by the world. They say you be an independent woman. You be assertive. And that's what we learn. Women's rights, you know, all kinds of things. And we, we really need to have someone help us take a look inside so we're not paralyzed. When someone's paralyzed, they need a lot of help. You know, I used to take care of my mom, who was um, dying of cancer at the time. I didn't know it was cancer. And she really couldn't move around a lot because she had, um, she just was on a lot of morphine. <clears throat> sometimes I can talk about this, sometimes it's hard. So she died back in 2001. But I needed to help her a lot. Like, I just needed to help her um, put the medicine in. I, I learned how to become a nurse because... Although I didn't have the skills, I needed to learn how to help her get rid of her pain. She was so paralyzed um, from being able to do the things that she needed to because her brain tumor moved into her brain stem. It's a very complicated organ, the brain. And then she couldn't talk because she needed a tracheotomy. But she was all there. Like she would write all the things that she, she was afraid of. And I, I remember having to help her, I, and she needed that help. And sometimes when we're looking into our soul, the depth of our soul, we, need, we just need help because we're paralyzed. And help is good. It helps you to get through a very painful time. And I like to think that I helped my mom get through a painful time in her life. Excuse me, sorry. But, you know, maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. How does this apply to your soul? You know, maybe you've kind of slipped and not having those times with God that, that you once was, that you were all in. And you don't really want to get exposed out of fear of embarrassment or shame. Get open today. It's okay. Like, you need the help. We all need it. I need help. If you're not a Christian yet or you don't know, 
you know, I, and maybe you're ashamed that, oh, people are going to know I don't know where the books of the Bible are. I don't really know about, I don't have a Bible. It's okay. Let us help you. You know, we need this. That's our mirror. We need that reflection. Wouldn't you want to know? I, we all do really want to know. We want to be able to go before God saying that we knew. We all have our blemishes, sisters. Um, we all have spiritual zits, as you call them, <laughs> pimples. We hate them. We cover them up with concealer. Um, but you know what? God never created concealer for the blemishes in your heart. He wants you to get rid of it. And um, I needed to learn what that looked like in my own life. And it took people, sisters, that was really following the Bible to help me to do that. You know, Satan's number one battle for each of us that, at least this is what I came up with this month, it has felt like this, it's to keep us out of our Bible. It's to keep us out of our spiritual mirror. He doesn't want you in it. He wants you to be too busy. He wants you to be too ashamed. Because why? The scriptures are going to change you. When you look intently into it, it's going to change you. It's going to build your faith. It's going to calm your anxiety. It's going to make you whole. It's going to get rid of your fears. All those fears that you once had, gone. Gone. So in closing, I'd like to read one scripture to you, but I'd like you to close your eyes and soak this one in. It's uh, Close your eyes for a minute and just think about this scripture. It made me think about the song that Jasmine sang, Let It Go. And it's in 2 Corinthians 4.16. I'll repeat it so you can, you can write it later. It says, Therefore, we do not lose hearts, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what was seen is temporary. So sisters, fix your eyes for a moment on what is unseen, your spirit, your soul. Are you wrestling? Is there something in there that you just need someone to get in there with you? What does it look like? And you can open your eyes now. So that scripture, if you want to write it down, is 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. Your soul is the only thing you're going to take with you. And that's one thing I learned when I watched my mom go through what she went through. It's the only thing. And she had a nice big house, but, you know, at the end, even she said it didn't matter. You don't get to really take the makeovers that we see, you know, the spas, even though I love the spas. We don't get to take that. We don't get to take a good massage, which I like that too, or the makeup or a nice outfit. You get to take the real you. And this is something I, I needed in my life. So talk to the person that you came with today. And I, I pray that this can become your family. We want to be your sisters. We want to be your family. Uh, we want you to be able to look into our soul, and we want to look into yours. And I just really, I love the song that Jasmine sang. And Tracy read some of the lyrics today. But it's really amazing. I'm going to read a, just a short portion in closing. It says, let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Don't let them in. Don't let them see. Be the good girl you always had to be. Conceal. Don't feel. Don't let them know. Isn't that what the world teaches us? That's crazy. Well, now they know. God knows. The fears that once controlled me cannot get me at all. Standing frozen in a life that we've chosen. The past is all behind me buried in the snow. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold back anymore. So as, as you leave today, I pray you let it go. Um, anything that is hindering you, the past is behind you, like this song says. It's buried. We had some snow, right? It's buried in that snow, that snowstorm we had. Don't let the fears control you. Don't um, conceal like we have always done. I know that's something, a habit of mine that I've always done. It's the life that we've chosen, but we can choose a new life today. And I love you all, sister. Thank you very, very much for letting me speak today.